Welcome back to the job site. Today we are running about 500 linear feet of baseboard and we're using a medium density cancer board. I mean fiber board. It's not really our favorite thing to use and uh, it's just the industry that we work in I guess. But I'm going to show you some basics and that's going to be how to cope inside corners using a coping saw. And this baseboard that we're using today is very common. It's a five and a quarter inch baseboard and it's a really good one to, to practice with because there's not a lot of detail in it. So let's go ahead and get to it. Here's the baseboard that we're gonna be using. This is what most builders are using here in Texas. It's a five and a quarter inch, 218 is what we call it. There's a profile image of it for you from the side as seen in the catalogs. And like I mentioned earlier, it's a medium density fiber board, MDF. And I did say it was a medium density cancer board, but in all seriousness, uh, if you're gonna use MDF, seriously protect yourself because you don't want to get cancer because it, it will cause cancer if you cut it enough like how we do. It has formaldehyde in it and you don't want to mess with any of that. So protect your lungs, number one, and number two, protect your eyes from this stuff. Because I know whenever I use this stuff a, lo a lot, especially in the past before I started protecting myself, it would really dry out my eyes and I would really have a hard time breathing at the end of the day. So seriously, it's nothing to play around with. So what I've got here is my 3M respirator to protect both of those things, my eyes and my lungs, and then hearing protection in my ears, which is headphones with music. But um, here's our cut list that we have. I have it set up on the saw right here. And you can see we drew out the whole house. We just do sketches of each room. And then we go around and we measure everything. And then this tape is right here because I made a mistake on the sketch. So kind of like a white out effect. And we got everything going on right here. So I'm going to take one of these inside corners from this sketch and show you how we do a simple baseboard cope on an inside corner. So we're just going to make a 45 and make that miter. Now we have our miter on our baseboard. What most people would do at this point is just take a pencil, kind of highlight that finished edge there, the profile of the baseboard. But I'm not gonna do that. I can see the distinction clearly between the primer and the color of the MDF. So I'm gonna show you a little way you can cheat at this coping game. You're gonna flip this board upside down, swing the saw to a 45, or actually it's already gonna be set up from when you had it. You're just gonna flip it upside down and you'll see that line right there where the primer meets the MDF. I'm gonna put the tooth of my blade right next to that line, get it lined up. Then I'm gonna come down on that all the way down to where you'll see the profile start to curve because that's as far as I can go. That'll just save me some time and effort with the coping saw. So I'll bring it right to that edge. And that's a little way that you can save yourself some time. Because what you're doing essentially when you're coping is you're just cutting all this, all this out and you're back cutting it. So you can see right here, it back cuts it for you too. And then I'm using this Baco coping saw. It has a really nice handle and a really, really strong frame, which I like. So I'm gonna put this in. And I like to put my blades in when I cut this stuff on the pull stroke. You can put them in either way where it cuts on the pull stroke or the push stroke. It's totally up to you, personal preference. You wanna make sure this thing is seated all the way in there. And then of course, have your safety glasses on for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. I'm just gonna run into one of these profiles here. And I got my saw set up, as I said, on the pull stroke. So I'll put it at the bottom and then just pull. Then I want to follow that profile as tight as I can. And it's if I don't get right up next to it, that's completely okay, because I can sand it down or file it down, whichever you prefer. Now you'll feel when you get into a turn like this, you'll feel your blade kind of stopping you. It's gonna to want to pinch. And you can kind of hear it too, or I can. I don't know if you can hear it on there. 
But that's the advantage of having these really thin coping saw blades. You can kind of just run them through there. Through those pinches. If it gets too bad, like right there, I'm kind of maxed out with the frame of the coping saw anyways. So I'm gonna back it back out. And then all I gotta do is come at it from a different angle. Now, these coping saw blades, you can maneuver them. Like they have this handle that you can loosen and then twist the blade in a direction that you want it to. So you can see there that I can tighten that down and then use it at a different angle like this. And that allows you to keep this this frame of the saw away from the actual material. So we're gonna go follow our line up to the next detail. And then with those, the tips of these, these overlaps right here, you can save those a lot of times on hardwood, but with this MDF, it gets so brittle and it's really hard to save that, that little piece right there. Sometimes I can do it if I just hold my finger there, keep pressure on it and use my finger as like a fence. But you know, there's some controversy if, you know, you sh if you should leave these, I'll file that down. If you should leave these overlaps right here, you know, people say you shouldn't because you want people to see that you coped it. But honestly, I don't think homeowners care. It's only like a carpentry guy would see that and even care. But, you know, some people say you should, should leave them on there so you don't see it. But man, it's totally up to you. As long as the corner looks good and tight, you'll be good to go. And I will mention too that you'll notice that the whole time I've cut this, I kind of had it beveled. And let me show you that. And you can see right there, that's where the miter saw left off and that's where I picked it up. So I'll file that down. But you see how I 45 that on the miter saw? I kind of kept this angle out of 45 as well, as close as I could. That way when it, I actually put this in there, it'll hug that corner and make it tight. So I'll file this down to the finish line and we'll check it out. So this is a file I'm gonna use right here. There are other files you can use, especially if you got really ornate moldings, you're gonna want something skinnier than this. You're gonna to wanna to have several files. But this one will get the job done for this. And I'm just gonna use the curved part of the file and just kind of work, work my way up to that line. And this is gonna ensure a nice fit when I go to put this piece in. And this is just a game of finesse. That's all it is, using the curvature of the file to follow the curvature of the moldings and you can see why I cut it with the miter saw on the straight part and just saved me all that time of cutting that out so I'm pretty happy with that we'll go inside and check out how that looks there's the back of it and then there's how it looks from the front profile so let's go check that out so we'll check this out I went ahead and brought that file with me just in case I need to clean it up a little bit more but this should be pretty close yeah, I'm happy with that right there. So I'm gonna call that good right there. I'm gonna say that that one's good to go. And I'm gonna mark it off and make sure our miter is good to go as well. So why cope? You know, why would you do this? What's the point? Why not just find the inside angle of this corner and then make those two miters? Well, one advantage is for doing this, you don't have to find every miter, every, I mean, not every miter. You don't have to find every angle in every corner. You can just butt this piece up to it, cope this one out, push it up against it. And no matter what variance there is in there, if it's hovering around 90, you'll be good to go and that'll be tight. So that's one advantage of doing it. A disadvantage is it takes a little bit more time when you're first starting out, but when you get the hang of coping on those, on the profile of that molding, it really doesn't take much more time. I mean, I don't know how long that one just took me and I was actually taking it slow to talk to you and show you the process. So maybe on a molding like this, a minute or two minutes or something like that. 
So that's all, all it is. It's, it's just hugging the profile of the existing molding that's buttered up to the wall. So those are kind of some advantages of it. And I guess the disadvantage would be the time in the beginning. But I'll show you, I'll just put this molding right there. And I'm, obviously I'm not even holding this at 90 degrees. I'm just holding it tight against the molding. And you can see how tight of a joint that is. So if I move it a little bit forward, still hugs tight. If I move it a little bit backward, it's still acceptable, it hugs tight. So that's it, that's how you cope. You just wanna trace out that profile and make sure that it fits tightly against the other profile and you'll be good to go. So there you have it. Hopefully you learned something from this video on how to cope your baseboards and we'll see y'all next time. Take care.